Well, I want to thank everybody for um, showing up here today for this uh, press conference to draw attention to the need for factual California Indian education um, with history and culture in our local school system. My name is uh, Assemblymember James Ramos, and we're joined here with several legislators and uh, others um, from the Native American community. Before we start, I ask permission from the local people here, Chairman Tarango, Nissan, um, and to be able to open up with a song, a, a prayer. Um, and he gave me permission to do that. So I'm going to open up with a Serrano uh, Bighorn Sheep song to set the, the mood and to really cover us all. E shamara hakape avum avum 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 E shamara haka he avum avum E shamara hakape 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 avum avum Well, I want to thank everybody for being here for this very important issue um, facing California Indian people and the state of California. The song that, that I sang is a traditional Serrano um, bighorn sheep song that was taught to me by Mr. Ernest Siva. And I'm Serrano in Cahuilla from down in the San Bernardino County area. And even just singing that song starts to break away from the myths and conceptions that, that all Indian people use drums and and for their music. So we're starting to educate people even by these press conferences that we're having here today. And it's a sad reminder that currently still going on in the state of California, the blatant disrespect towards Native American people in the teaching arena. And what I mean by that is in October, there was a teacher from the Riverside City Unified School District that dressed up with a headdress and was frolicking around the, the classroom trying to teach math skills still to this day showing that blatant disrespect. We also are tasked with um, the legislature in working to identify and to bring forward history, history in the state of California, such as the founder of the Hastings Law School and the militias and the atrocities and the genocide that was inflicted upon uh, Round Valley and Eden Valley, the Yuki Indians and the Round Valley Tribal Council up in those areas. Still that history is not being told here in the year 2022 in our local school systems. And, and we start to see uh, the boarding schools, the boarding schools that had slogans that moved forward here in the state of California and across the nation that had a slogan that said, kill the Indian, save the man. People still do not even know that that history and that era took place. And still, to this day, people don't even know, even with the pandemic that's going on, why some tribal elders, um, women in particular, are hesitant to move forward with a vaccine because of policies of sterilization towards Native American women as late as 1978. These are the, the issues that need to be told, as well as making sure that we're at, uh, owning up to the history the history and the impact against California Indian people, where militias were formed throughout the state of California. And those militias went out and killed Indian people in the state of California, genocide atrocities that were then reimbursed by the state legislature that then was reimbursed by the federal government. Taxpayers' dollars moved forward on these militias. These are things that we want to make sure that we talk about factual history in the state of California, that all students in the state of California will be able to learn factual, factual issues of what has happened here in the state of California. When we start to move forward and we talk about 
areas, areas that affected other groups in, in the state of California. We talk about the Holocaust. Let's make sure that all California Indian people remember that. Let's remember that all people in the state of California understand that part of history. But at the same time, let's make sure that everyone in the state of California understands the atrocities and genocide inflicted upon the California Indian people. Local schools should be connecting with their local tribes, establishing California American Indian Education Task Force to learn about the history and culture from around their local areas, making sure that the history that's there is being taught in the local school systems. Today, we see a first step in addressing those areas. Washington State moved forward with a bill called Time Immemorial, and we've seen that when they started to educate the whole state on the factual culture and history of Washington State's first people, we've seen the education attainments start to move forward within our people. We start to see those things start to move forward when we start to see a state recognize and move forward. And where else to start than in education? Education is where we start to educate all those in the state of California as early as the third and fourth grade, learning about the local tribes in your own area here in the state of California. And in the eighth grade, when we learn about history from the Civil War all the way to present history, let's remember and talk about the history of those bounties being reimbursed by state taxpayers' dollars. And in the 11th grade, when we learn about the governmental system, Let's make sure that when we learn about the federal, the state, the local levels, that we are also learning about the sovereign tribal governments in the state of California. This is just a start in trying to make sure that we get that voice moving here in the state of California. And with me today is a group of, of leaders that so heartedly believe in this mission that they're here standing here with me at 9 o'clock in the morning. And I want to bring them up to say a few words. I want to start with Senator Robert Hertzberg. Wait for Mundler's. Respect. Respect for your elders. That's what I learned from Chairman Joe Welsh, from Chairwoman Sister Romero, from Chairwoman Dora Prieto, and so many others that I've met throughout my life. Respect. Respect for your elders. And what does that mean? It means understanding what went before. It means having an understanding of your history and your culture of what and what we're about. And when I served in government in the other house some decades ago, I put over here on the West Steps, it took me four years to get it done, a bronze seal next to the state seal that reflects 40 generations of Native Americans in California and reflects all those tribal governments. In order to, st as part of the effort that we're here today, to make the statement about our history of who we are, to show respect, to learn, to listen about our cultures and the Native American, the Indian tribal governments and all of what occurred and the good and the bad is part of who we are. And so as a people, as a democracy, as a culture, this is so essential. And personally, as a result of more than 50 years, 60 years, I think, probably, in terms of deep relationships with so many in the community, that is a part of who I am. That is why I'm here today. That's why I stand tall with the chairman and his efforts to expand education uh, of these very, very important issues. And I thank you for being included as part of this uh, esteemed group. Thank you so very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, um, Senator. Next, I'd like to bring up Assembly Member Robert Rivas. Well, thank you, uh, Assembly Member Ramos. Uh, and good morning, everyone. And, and to Assembly Member Ramos, thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning uh, and for leading the charge on this critical, critical issue. You know, as Vice Chair of the Latino Legislative Caucus, I want to express uh, our, and, and really reaffirm our strong support uh, for this effort and for this legislation, legislation which builds on the victory we achieved just last year on ethnic studies. Uh, and this press conference takes place uh, at a moment when underserved and underrepresented uh, our communities of color, particularly our native people, face increasing discrimination, hate speech, and even violence. 
And a lot of that goes back to the fact that we learn very little about California's native peoples in our school system. Uh, I know that I learned virtually nothing about uh, our tribal history or about the present as I grew up in this state. And the result is that it's bigotry, stereotypes, and most of all, a lack of knowledge that color many Californians' perception of our native peoples today. And the only cure for ignorance, the only cure for ignorance is education. Promoting active engagement between schools and local native tribes can close this gap in our curriculum and provide additional firsthand educational opportunities for students to learn about the many contributions of California's first people. And once again, I want to acknowledge our colleague, Assemblymember Ramos, for his work, his efforts, our uh, state superintendent, uh, Mr. Tony Thurman, for his support as well, uh, as well as the countless uh, others uh, advocating on this very important issue. Uh, again, I and the California Latino Legislative Caucus remain committed to getting this done over this coming legislative year. Thank you. Thank you, Assemblymember Rivas. Uh, next, I'd like to bring up Assemblymember Christina Garcia. Good morning. I'm uh, happy to be here and appreciative of my colleague James Ramos for bringing us together today to call attention to the need for instructional curriculum relating to the rich history and culture of California Native Americans and really Native Americans across this country. I was a classroom teacher for 13 years and I know firsthand that a lot of students don't realize our nation's history. Some students believe that California was just a place with a bunch of animals and bears uh, and it wasn't until the gold rush that people got here out there. But that's far from the truth. California has a vibrant and thriving Native American community that's been here uh, from, from the beginning. It should not be surprising that so many students don't know our rich culture and history of our Native American brothers and sisters when the reality is that there's less training and resources in many states, including here in California. And a lot of our standards don't mention uh, how to teach the Native American history out there. And while I do not have all the answers, I know that we need to approach this with humility and we must listen to our Native voices. They must be at the table helping to draft and craft what this curriculum looks like. Specifically, we need communication, we need education, and we need cultural awareness happening between our local tribes and their local school districts out there. And so legislation like we have here today is important, but for our local leaders out there, you don't have to wait for legislation to happen. I hope you're being proactive now and taking that leadership role. As the chair of the Women's Caucus, myself and the caucus is committed to ensuring that all populations and historical perspectives are presented to our students. Uh, and it's crucial that we do that and that we embrace that as a state out there. California's history is painful in the realities. During our early and 60s of, this, of our state, there's a lot out there, as our, ch our chair of the Native American Caucus mentioned out there. And we can't ignore our past, but I hope as we continue to do the work that we also embrace the fact that Native American history is current and modern, and that we embrace the fact that we have leaders out there right now across the nation who are doing the good work and have a lot to teach us today uh, with that. And so myself and the Women's Caucus is committed to being here, to learning, to growing, uh, but more importantly, to ensuring that your voices are leading this discussion uh, along the way to ensure that we get it right and we don't continue to perpetuate the misinformation that's been out there. Uh, uh, as well. And so I want to thank all my colleagues, the senators, the superintendent for their commitment to this. And like my colleague uh, from the Latino Caucus said, this is the year. It's long overdue and we must get it done this year and the Women's Caucus is committed to that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Assemblymember uh, Christina Garcia. Next, I'd like to bring up uh, Assemblymember Eduardo uh, Garcia. Good morning, buenos dias. Uh, it is uh, truly an honor to be here and stand with my colleagues, uh, particularly um, to acknowledge also the leadership of Assemblymember James Ramos. I think we owe uh, his district, uh, we owe his district, his constituents, uh, tremendous um, gratitude for sending him to the California State Legislature. Uh, he, uh, through his knowledge and uh, experiences firsthand, has changed uh, the discourse 
of conversation here at the California State Capitol, and we're very, very honored to be able to work side by side with him and our other colleagues to push an agenda that is about inclusiveness, an agenda that is about a comprehensive approach to teaching California history. And at the front and center of that is the history of the first people of this great state. And I come from a region, uh, Southern California, the Coachella Imperial Valley, where we represent uh, proudly uh, a number of uh, tribal nations made up of the Cahuilla Desert people. And, uh, you know, early on in my public service uh, career, we uh, learned very quickly uh, what uh, it means and how significant it is to acknowledge the true histories and the issue of sovereignty uh, and what that means to communities, um, not just in our region, but throughout the state of California. We get the opportunity today to work uh, with our colleagues, specifically our chairman, uh, James Ramos, uh, to push the agenda uh, through a public policy uh, perspective that will hopefully, uh, for generations to come, uh, begin telling the true history and story of California natives. Uh, muy buenos días. Soy asambleísta Eduardo García. Es un honor poder acompañarnos esta mañana con nuestros compañeros, en particular nuestro compañero uh, James Ramos, quien viene de las áreas de San Bernardino, Rancho Cucamanga. Estamos muy agradecidos que los votantes de esa región lo mandan a Sacramento para ser una voz, no solo para ellos, pero también para la gente que viene de California, los primeros que estuvieron aquí, los nativos americanos, y para poder impulsar una agenda de pol política pública que verdaderamente reflecte la historia y la verdad de los primeros nativos aquí en el, esta en el estado de California. Para nosotros es un orgullo poder estar aquí con él y con mis colegas para promover esta agenda que sea inclusiva y que represente la verdad y la historia del estado de California. Uh, con eso, muchísimas gracias y estamos aquí para apoyar este esfuerzo. Well, thank you, uh, Assemblymember Eduardo Garcia. Next, I'd like to bring up Assemblymember uh, Luz Rivas to say a few words. Good morning. Very excited to be here to join Assemblymember James Ramos and my colleagues in supporting this bill. Um, and, you know, Assemblymember James Ramos has been a much needed voice in the legislature. He's bringing these issues that should have been done a long time ago. When I was a kid, I would have loved to have learned about California's first people in school. Um, but uh, even though it wasn't done long ago, now is the time. This is the year, like my colleagues have said, um, to bring this measure forward and pass it. Um, you, children want to learn about their own state's history, including all of the people um, that, may, that are part of California's history. Teachers want to collaborate with tribes. They want to bring this to the classroom. When kids are learning about themselves, about other people um, that make up this state that were part of the history, they're more excited, they're more engaged in the classroom. Um, and teachers get excited when children are engaged in the classroom. So that's why I'm here to support this, to support um, James Ramos um, and make sure that this does make it across to the governor's desk. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for all those um, uh, testimonies there and to attest to the need for California Indian education. Um, here with me also today, representing the Mountain Maidu people um, with California Nat Native Vote Project is uh, Mr. Calvin Hedrick. Thanks, brother. <clears throat> thank you. Hasasaga Nikki Yamkakan, Calvin Hedrick. Uh, I am a Mountain Maidu person um, from Plumas County, California. I currently uh, live here in Sacramento where I, I am a lead organizer with the California Native Vote Project. Um, I'm definitely happy to be here today with Assemblymember uh, Ramos and um, uh, the, the other honorable people here. Um, and I am definitely here supporting this language in, in uh, Assembly Bill 1554 and um, any future legislation. Um, I've worked with tribal communities and specifically with tribal youth programs 
programs for about 20 years, and I see the importance of native voices in California history and social science class, uh, social studies classrooms. I understand the importance of academic growth and well-being of our Native American students in California. And um, as an advocate and longtime youth mentor, I see a, the direct effect of an education system that fails our Native American students. I see this as we battle substance use and mental health disorders, as well as suicide ideation, um, low attendance rates and high suspension rates, um, and high dropout rates that have a direct effect on our Native American youth um, and a direct link to the incarceration of our Native American youth. Our Native American students in California deserve an education that is inclusive of our history, reflects our values, and creates a safe space for learning. By expanding the American Indian Education Centers, um, more of our Native American students will have that support. As many of us in California, as ma many of us in Native uh, communities here in California have seen, these things are not possible without meaningful and appropriate consultation with tribal communities, tribal advocates, and tribal organizations. I definitely look forward to um, any legislation moving forward that um, includes these things and includes um, a proper understanding of education and what has happened here in California. Um, I'm so happy to hear so many of the representatives here talking about um, you know, this being the year and moving forward, and we're definitely looking forward to that. You know, and as, as, as has been stated before, we've been looking forward to this for a long time. So I really appreciate the opportunity to be here um, to support this man who I think really has given voice to tribal communities. Um, and I know from my grandmother who worked tirelessly for a lot of years in her life for Indian education, um, she wanted to make sure that we had these voices because a lot of times those voices were taken away from our community. And so I definitely appreciate um, uh, Assembly Member Ramos being here and, and bringing these to light. And I look forward to um, working in whatever way the California Native Vote Project can work, um, you know, to rally, rally uh, individuals and, and tribal communities in our state uh, to support this kind of legislation. So thank you very much. Well, thank you um, for all those um, words that are there, and it truly is. Um, you know, we, we are moving forward on a, on a piece of legislation that will be heard today at, at 1.30 um, in Education Committee, and it starts to move the intent of the legislature forward in addressing uh, these, these issues that we're talking about here today. And as chair of the first time ever in historic in the state of California, as chair of the California Native American Legislative Caucus, we stand here together in unity to ensure that the voices, the voices of those that have been buried in the grounds here in the state of California that are still crying out, tell them the true story of what happened to us. Tell them the true story of who we are as California Indian people. We stand here today united to make sure that that voice will not be silenced anymore, that we need to move forward within our educational system to make sure that people truly understand that just because you try to pan-Americanize a culture, a people into one, into one area, that doesn't work with the Indian people in general. Serrano Cahuilla have different stories, different atrocities. Maidu have different stories, different atrocities. But we also have accomplishments, accomplishments to be able to sit here on the steps of the state capitol as a sitting member of the state legislature and the only California Indian ever elected in the state legislature to be able to have this press conference alludes to the voices and make sure that those voices will be heard. And we're going to continue to move forward on pieces of legislation. I want to thank everybody who showed up here today. This is just the beginning of a lot of work that needs to happen here in the state of California. Thank you for attending. Any questions? Or Thank you.